What's up, all inners, and welcome to another episode of the All In Podcast, a podcast for casual leaguers. I'm the League Dad, uh, as always, joined by Kevin Mitchell Allister. And uh, I know it's been a week off since we were last on air, but actually, that's not true because we did record. We try to record a live reaction video to uh, basically our reactions to the 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 draw, uh, the world's draw show, and uh, it was great. It was fun. And then my computer crashed, and then I tried to recover the video, nothing happened, didn't work, so we gave up on it, and so now you're going to get a double dose, and you're going to hear uh, our thoughts on that show, the drawing results, and then uh, playing stages coming up, but all in all, guys, I'm excited for Worlds, how, how are y'all feeling? This starts Thursday, We're, I mean, it's here, I, this is what we wait for all year, uh, as a fan, I'm ex super excited, what are you, how are you guys feeling right now? I'm pretty stoked. I'm excited. I mean, it is plans, so I think most people are actually just waiting for the group stage, which is like the main event. But plans is still gonna be hype, especially when we get an upset. Um, like one of Mad Lions and Team Liquid is playing a best of five to get into groups. So yeah. that's what I'm looking forward to. Heck yeah, man. I mean plans, I'm still excited. What about you guys, Kevin Alistair? Go for it. So I'm just looking forward to international play in general. Like, I want to see what the new meta is. I want to see what we're going to start playing. I want to see some cool strats. Honestly, yeah, plans isn't as exciting as the normal group stage. But historically, there's actually been some pretty spicy plans in the last two years specifically. I just remember all these game fives with like Cloud9 in it or uh, was Clutch. It Clutch. Clutch yeah. also got to a game five. And I'm like, wow, NA almost didn't get all our reps in. So... I, I think it's going to be more interesting than some people let on. It is a shame that we lost the Vietnam teams. Mm -hmm. um, the one Vietnam team that would have been in play in would have been a big problem, I think, for NA teams. And also, the other kind of major region team, other than LGD, Mad Lions, Team Liquid, and... Uh, ch -ch -ch PSG. PSG, is, PSG PS is PSG, and they are yeah. missing tons of players. Yeah. So like it's that could be a bone a boon to them. Like Super Massive did well when they had LSPL players sub in, but like honestly, it's going to be a real toss up because Group B just has one first seed team and then like half of PSG talent showing up. Mm, yeah, that's true. Alistair, you looking forward to the plans or you you waiting for groups? <laughs> I'm I'm looking forward to seeing some of the higher up teams i'm not that stoked for it to be honest but plans i mean some of the games will be good I'm, I'm gonna watch tl mad lions i'll watch like games like that but i'm not gonna watch like some of the lower ones come on man international gameplay this is what we waited for we had no msi this is, I'm, I'm stoked man and all of 2020 with all the bad crap that's mm -hmm. happening this is the this is one of those things where i'm trying to grab every moment and just savor it and so i'm gonna be watching as much of it as i can uh live too if i can if i can help it i don't know some of these time zones in china are gonna gonna be pretty difficult like, but look man like 1 a.m <laughs> hey man I, i'm setting alarms i'm taking naps i'm I'm just super stoked. I'm sure this will probably last for like a day, and then I'll be like, you know what? I can't do it. <laughs> can't yeah. do it my old self. But let, let's look at um, some of the world's, you know, let's look at the world's results, right? Because the drawings happened last week. Um, what group are you most excited? Let's start off with that, I guess, because, uh, you know, all the groups look pretty competitive. I think we all looked and kind of said, well, you know, a lot of good competition out there, and I think that's a good thing because, you know, this is world, so we want to have the best of the best there. But what group, you know, for you guys is the most exciting and, and that you're looking forward to seeing? Uh, most exciting group for me, I think, is going to be Group C. It's going to be Group C. Uh, we're almost for sure getting LGD in that group. Um, so it's going to be TSM, Fnatic, Gen.G, LGD. Um it's just going to be hype because uh, everyone's saying, and I think I agree, that that's the group where maybe anybody can get out. Like, there is no clear two favorites. Um, there are, like, some favorites-ish, but, like, no team is at a significant disadvantage, right? TSM mm -hmm. Ascending is their, the best North American team, and they're going up against, like, the middle of the pack teams of the other major regions. Yeah. So it's exciting. It's like NA's one real hope. Probably. Um, and There's always one. Uh, we always know how that turns out. It yeah. turns out great for us, always, the first seed for North America. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, the other teams, LGD, Gen G, Fnatic, they have all shown holes in their gameplay. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where North America is like, hey, that's where we shine. Show us those holes, baby. <laughs> Show us the holes. So, fell them right out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's what cool. I said for. Okay. Yeah, it's got to be Group C. I mean, I agree. Uh, I will add on that the really cool part about Group C that I don't believe is a dynamic in any of the other groups is that there is a major region team from every region there. Uh, let me think. Group, Am I group D, if Mad Lions goes through. We'll be if the same. Mad Lions goes through, right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, fair enough. Then the Group C and D, but Group C will have seeds 2, 2, 1, and 4. So, EU, Korea, NA, and China. And, like... Mm -hmm. Honestly, like, I don't know. LGD might not make it out. No, uh, it's one, two, three, four. Because Gen.G is third seed. Gen.G is third seed? Yeah, DRX is second yeah. seed. They got in through Gauntlet. All oh, right, Gen.G and the Gauntlet. Yeah. That yeah. was just an ability. <laughs> well, then, okay, then it's perfect. We get to see the third and fourth seeds of the traditionally best regions versus the new, the new second best region's second seed and us <laughs> first seed. Us! If, yeah. uh, I'm just going to say, if NA can't win this group, we're in a little bit of trouble. Uh, or not win, get second in this group, we're a little bit in trouble. We're in big trouble, man. We're out. World. Literally, all the, weakest, <laughs> all the weaker teams, uh, to be fair, they could have got Dragon X, and that would have been better than Gen.G, because Gen.G is better than Dragon X, in my opinion. Um, but besides that, like this is this is the best group TSM could have gotten. It's fourth C China. So that therefore, they could get second, or even first, if mm. everything goes to shit. Um, and also, NA's, I will say, we're going to get into this later, but also TSM's players have been looking mighty good in solo queue. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll talk about oh, that. Yeah. Definitely uh, lots of exciting stuff to see on the Super Server. Alistair, do you agree with these two? Uh, are you are you pretty much excited to see Group C as well, or do you have a, another group that you're looking forward to? I'm Honestly, I'm looking forward to all of them for the most part. I mean, I think Group C is definitely the most interesting. Um, I think... I, I, I'm curious to see how Brox and Impact do because they, if they do better, we could see some upsets. Honestly, I think. Mm. I, I think. I mean, they got to get through plans over, first, but. Yeah, but I mean, assuming Brox and Impact show up, we're assuming they make it out of plans, and if they get to Group A, I, I think there's a possibility of an upset. Oh, okay, I, li so I like it. I'm, hey. I'm hoping for that. But That's we'll right. See. NA always playing as the underdog, but uh, we'll take it. One thing interesting, uh, I saw this on, on a Reddit post, is that TSM and Fnatic will actually get to play each other at Worlds for the first time ever. Uh, as long as these organizations have been in the League of Legends scenes, as big as they are, they have never once faced each other in Worlds, and so that's going to be a first for them. So it'll be exciting to see that at least. I mean, hopefully we'll pull out the win. I don't know. Um, but like you said, some of these players are, are looking pretty good, and it's nice to see how all the players from different regions are doing on this big super server region. Uh, but before we get into that... Um, Let's talk about just overall favorites at Worlds, right? Because I think, you know, I watched a video by G Bay. I don't know if you guys have ever seen uh, some of the videos he puts out. And he put out a uh, kind of a cool uh, video on just like storylines coming in. And, uh, you know, the, his his top two, you know, that he thinks are, are going to win are uh, Top Esports and Damn One. Uh, and I know uh, JD, JD Gaming is also up there. But do you guys agree with that that three, um, you know, or, or do you do you? I mean, who's your favorite? Who do you think is is gonna win this thing? If you just had to be a betting man, statistically, and what you've seen this year, uh, who who is the winner here in Worlds? Let's just start from the very top at the very end. All right, I'm gonna go. My favorite to win would be Top Esports because I think there's a possible. Realistically, I think the two best team, three best teams are Dam One and JD, uh, Dam One, JDG, and Top Esports, and I think Top Esports is probably. I can guarantee you the top esports, well, almost guarantee the top esports gets first in their group, and then JDG and Dam One would be one mm. of them does. Yeah, I think finals is going to be JDG and top, but I think <laughs> LPL rematch. Okay. <laughs> yeah, probably. Hey, those are some sick it'll be finals. another. It'll be another yeah. five game series. <laughs> that's um. Uh, but th that's th th those cool. would definitely be the three. Hmm. Yeah. What are you thinking, Kevin? I'm thinking, so what What scares me the most is this sounds exactly like 2015, mm -hmm. where it was EDG, LGD, and SKT, I believe, coming in. 
and they were the top three, right? They were like, oh yeah, these guys are the best teams, and like there's no even competition for fourth. Um, I'm thinking that yeah. I, first of all, get it out of the way. Top esports is gonna win. Okay. Uh, they they're either gonna win or they they're the favorites, right? They're just insane. They have world's winners on their team, which is something that previous like favorites teams from China never had. Um, so that's a huge deal. And then the second component to it is I actually think that G2 may be better than Dom One in a head to head matchup. Wow. If I saw them face each other in the quarterfinals, I would favor G2. Just historically, G2 hasn't had an issue with them. With um, Korean teams, yeah. With Korean teams in general, but. It, I think they've literally faced each other. Yeah, they literally faced each other. But that was Daniel Gaming's first year at Worlds. They're very different. I, they had a different bot lane too. And true. That was they they had a different bot lane. Nuclear was worse than Nuclear Barrel was worse than Ghost and whoever their support is now. Okay, so yeah, I mean, my point is like I think G two could could probably get it closer to that third place position in my mind. Yeah. And I don't know if that's JDG's third place or uh, Domlin's third place, but. I think G2 is still extremely good. That that experience and this roster being together for two years now yeah. is, is a big deal. Yeah, I, think, I call them close fourth. Yeah, I mean, I think the group B with just having Damwon and JD in the same group, that should make some, for some interesting matches, maybe give us a little bit of a preview uh, of what, what to expect. I mean, having those two powerhouse teams uh, in the same group is going to make for some exciting action. I feel sorry for Rogue and whoever the, the to be... The, to be determined team is going to be because they got some tough competition. But um, yeah, what? I mean, I wouldn't underestimate Rogue. They're okay. a team that I know is excels with preparation and their players have been popping off in the Chinese super server. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't count them out yet. I mean, Europe has been a region where if you underestimate them, they do surprise like Splice. True. Thought, we thought they were going to get destroyed, but they look competitive against both SKT and FBX. So, um, my favorite, um, I actually, so it is Barrel on this Dan One Gaming support. So it's just Ghost that switched out. Okay. Um, my favorite is, I mean, I could say Top Esports. It's literally everybody's favorite, right? <laughs> so I'm going to personally go with Dan One Gaming. I actually think that they could win the whole thing. I do think stylistically, they could have trouble with G2, but against every other team, I mean, I think Showmaker and Canyon are potentially the best jungle mid duo in the whole world right now. Wow. I mean, Karsa and Knight are really insane, right? But I don't know. I'm going to go with it. I uh, don't feel like going top esports. Everybody's saying it. I love mm -hmm. Karsa to death, but I'm feeling I'm feeling Canyon Showmaker. Okay. I mean, that's fair enough. Okay, I mean, let, I... let me put it this way. Yep. I, I was just gonna say I think a lot of it's very determined on who goes where after group stage. Yep. Because I mean we could just get top, we deal. could just get top versus Damwon in the is in quarters. Yeah, we could. We could get top versus so, JDG in quarters. Oh no, you can't do that actually. I don't think you can do that. No, you can't. Yeah. But okay. We could we could see G two and uh, JDG and um quarters. Dam one top esports in quarters. We could see both of those happen and. It could be the finals be the same bracket, that happened in quarters. Side. Yeah, it could be like KTIG again. Yeah. Yeah, but we've already seen JDG ver or we've already seen Top Esports versus Don One already, and it was pretty pretty lopsided at MSC. I mean, that was six so. months ago, so hey. it's a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> is that long hey, enough? Meta's Meta's changed a lot, and Damon Gaming is a team with a lot of rookies. Like this is Your their team? second year playing. Uh, so. At that point, I don't know if I call them rookies. Four, four, four months ago, but you are right. It, it meta's changed. C9 is bad now. C9 was mm -hmm. like top of NA by far. Really wish we could have ported them in here, but sucks I mean, to suck. look at LGD. LGD finished, I think, 11th in spring. Yeah, in other worlds, true. so a lot of things that happened in three or four months. LGD made a miracle run for sure. That is true. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's take a look real quick at Group A. W would you say that G two? So so far as G two, uh, Machi Esports and Sunin Gaming. Uh, wh what do what do we think about this group? D does it look like? I mean, how is Sunin compared to G two? I mean, Machi is a, a PCS team. Um, does this look like a pretty easy group for G two or Sunin even? Like, what are your thoughts on on Group A here? Uh, I think it is an easy group when it comes to getting out of groups. Yeah, I think G2 yeah. and Suning are highly favored. When it comes to getting first, though, which is a big deal when you're looking at winning the tournament, mm -hmm. very contested. I think 
when I go on social media and I hear other personalities talk about Zooning, they're very underestimated. And I'm super wow. surprised how underestimated they are. I think Zooning is really, really good. Um, SOFM, their jungler, insane. I think if he had a better team, people might be saying he's the best jungler in the world. Wow. Um, yeah, he really is. Because, like, he plays carry champions and he builds tank on them. And it's just like he has such an unorthodox, weird play style. He builds Knight's Vow on Lee Sin and stuff. And it's like, it's so weird and it makes it work. And he has, like, the craziest mechanics. Um, I think, yeah, I think if, like, Yankos is maybe not really as meta right now. He's playing a lot of, you know, set jungle, Shen jungle. He's not exactly playing the Graves and the Nilly. Like, that's a big deal for SOFM. So getting first is going to be difficult for G2. If you remember last year, actually, G2 looked like they should, they would have been first. They destroyed Griffin in their first game. And then Yankos got completely exposed in their second game, going like one and eight on Kiana. So yeah, G2 I mean, is... Yeah. Side not, note, I mean, SOFM also, I believe, I could be wrong, but I think he's the only Vietnam, like, player <laughs> represented. It, you know, so representing, he's got a whole country on his back. Uh, yep. So that is kind of a nice little side uh, storyline there uh, going on. Uh, did you guys have any thoughts, Kevin Alistair, on Group A? Uh, you know, wh who do you think comes out on top here as first place? I think Suning. Just for the reason Mitchell said, it's not Yanko's meta. Not yep. Yanko's meta. Jungle diff. <laughs> well, it's jungle meta. Everything's jungle, and if yeah. it's not your jungler's meta, I think you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. But there is also, you know, caps. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. That's true. True. I mean, caps Angel, is better than An Angel. Angel, yeah, he's he's definitely not up there in the top mid laners, even though he's on the top three teams. So. True. Okay. I'd say, I mean, Suning 3 0 LGD, 3 1 IG, and like SLFM is the reason why Chinese junglers play the way they do. Mm. Like before him, it was like clear love style, where it's like safe counter yeah. jungling or counter ganking media style. Now it's just like balls to walls, the Ning, the MLXDs, <laughs> yeah. like all those players. Like SLFM is the reason why they play like that. And he's better Levi. Like if you saw Levi at Worlds before beating EU teams, like now it's better Levi, the guy who actually got recruited first to China. Played on their server this whole time, and he's finally on a decent team. It's not the best team in the in the country, but it's a good team. I think Suning's just got J2's number. Um, Yankos is going to probably be in trouble against SOFM. Uh, the only reason, the way that they would win is they take a best one with Caps just like hyper carrying on a, yeah, I don't know, like a LeBlanc or something. Because Akali got her knees taken again. Yeah, that's true. Okay, well, here's one more question, I guess, uh, as we're still here kind of overviewing the, the groups, uh, the group stage. Who, who would you think, if you had to pick a dark horse to kind of surprise us all, like, who do you think that could be? Like, you know, we mentioned our tops, you know, these are the, the ones who everybody's got their eyes on because they've, you know, shown themselves to be good. You know, we mentioned top esports, Damwon, JDG. Uh, but is there a team that you see that like, man, people are sleeping on them? Uh, you know, maybe it's Suning. I don't know. I mean, they are from China, though. I mean, they're pretty good. Is there a team? <laughs> yeah. Is there a team, though, that you see uh, in groups or maybe even in play ins? If you want to go that far, uh, you know, deep, but anywhere on the in this world's roster, is there a team that you're that you think people are sleeping on? Spy quest. What? Spy quest. <laughs> Group D. So okay. the reason why they're sleeping on it is because this is probably NA's second best or best chance to get out groups. Um, wow. Mad Lions are literally all rookies. They're not. True. They like fell off toward the end. So like they're kind of like they're kind of like the team that got in without beating a good team is what the Rogue Twitter say, and that's true. Like they got into Worlds because they did really well during the regular season. Gotcha. Um, Top Esports is going to get first, sure. but DRX is looking like Garbo. Uh, it comparatively to what a Korean team in your mind looks like this team has got like depth slumping piosic and doran are their top jungle like i'm sorry mm -hmm. santorin and um it's true what's his name solos was it so yeah, yes Solo. are, i think i think they're significantly better than doran and piosic like that doran is has surprising <laughs> I, I i watch out i watch statement. lck too and i'm just like i at least santorin is better than piosic on a, on a piosic's on a good day is better but like piosic's good days are like one out of five uh and like I think that there's a very good chance the FlyQuest just upsets DRX cool. at least in one game. 
I and like then it. They, all they have to do is beat Mad Lions both times, which I think is possible. Um, I think that, I mean, we we're forgetting FlyQuest should be like basically the first seed in, in any other year. They could be the first seed coming in. Mm. And yeah. they, they took TSM to game five. They didn't sure. play well, but they did take TSM to game five. So like to us, it's kind of like the JDG of our region. We're not a good region, but we do have two almost first seeds coming in. And I go. do think that because DRX is garbage in my mind, and uh, Mad Lions is unproven. I'm willing to say that they will be the black sheep. Good point. Going in. Let's go. Hey, man, black I like West. it. I, I, I like kind it. of well, snickered I mean, at first, but I, I can see it. I mean, I agree with Mitchell, but I mean, at the same time, I'll, I'll yeah. say this because of what you said. I mean, Liquid, <laughs> if they get Group A, I think they could. <laughs> I can. Yeah. No, liquid. I think there's possibilities. Cause I, I, I mean, I think. I mean, it's very dependent on Brox and Impact playing better than they have been recently. But Jensen usually does well at Worlds as much as I don't. I, I don't like saying, oh, X player shows up for this. I don't like saying that. But, I mean, Jensen at Worlds tends to be pretty good. Yep. And, I mean, Tactical and Core JJ apparently have been going off on the Super Server. And, I mean, we've seen them play. Like, they're, I've seen a couple clips. Tactical is just going off he's yeah. smurfing holy tackles really insane on the super server like the the man was born to play in asian regions actually <laughs> you know and we talked about this before talking about like how uh i think I, I can't remember which one of you guys mentioned it but we were saying well a lot of these chinese players aren't they you know rookies to worlds and so maybe this being their first time will maybe give them cold feet and they'll choke but we also talked about that since we've been playing in, in covid environments um you know how does that actually affect rookies because it seems like the rookies that we've been seeing out of NA have been playing phenomenal. And, uh, you know, so I'm wondering if there will even be an impact on new players where this is their first Worlds. Because like I said, I mean, you take away that energy and you just got to imagine, like I was watching the TSM, uh, just whatever their their documentary show is and legends. how they, yeah, legends yeah. where they, they won it all. And like, you know, you see the footage of them when they win and they're like cheering and all this, but I'm like, Man, that is just not hype, though. Like, you, you like I'm hype on my end, right? But you, you compare that to the worlds before, where they're in stadiums and there's like thousands of people there, I've been and there. it's just super. Exactly. Well, worlds. You've been to worlds? No, no, not worlds. I was but there yeah, for, you've been um, exactly. I'm talking about a world stage, like where I mean, you literally have like just the biggest venues all filled with people from around the world. That's a whole different kind of pressure, and so I. Think rookies will perform well uh including ours but i also think that maybe first time i don't know players from you know whatever region Shooting, into LGD, yeah. yeah they might be fine mad lions no. i think you know we can look at it from the other direction right this was double F's worst year inside quarantine mm -hmm. maybe some pro players that are used to existing in the like exciting atmosphere with the crowd that feed off the energy Maybe they don't show up as much. Yeah. Um, Perks, he gave an interview. I actually talked about this like many podcasts ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but Perks gave an interview where he really felt like the, one of the reasons why G2 was struggling uh, in both splits, both in spring, they fell into the lower bracket, and in summer, and during the regular season for G2 during summer, they played pretty poorly, is that their players, they don't show up as much yeah. if there isn't a big crowd. Like, Especially like he was saying himself, Yankos Wonder, like they are really they're players that show up to the pressure. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I feel that especially about Perks. He's a guy that really shows up when the pressure matters. Mm -hmm. But when the pressure doesn't matter, maybe he <laughs> yeah. just is not there, right? So I don't you know. Feed off Perks. the energy. I think people, some people do feed off the energy. Double Lift even mentioned that same thing. And if yeah. you're used to like again, these are longtime pros who are used to that environment. Now, all of a sudden, you take that away and it's like playing at home again. Um, yeah. You know, slightly different, but you, you know what I mean? It's got to take away some of that that edge, you know, where they're feeding off of that energy of the crowd and gets them hyped. So, so yeah. Yeah. I'll answer the previous question now. The, mm -hmm. uh, the dark horse for me. It's a hype one. It's Rogue. Let's go. Ooh, okay. What if Rogue takes out Danmon Gaming or JDG right in group stage? That would be I don't insane. Think it's I don't think it's going to happen. Everyone's pickums would be destroyed. <laughs> absolutely destroyed. I do think people are underestimating them. I don't I don't think they're favored, obviously. And yeah. I don't think they're going to get out. 
but I think they have a higher chance than most people are giving them. Some people are literally going to give them 0% to get out of groups. Mm. I don't think it's 0%. Um, I, I think they could do it. I think you get a lot of preparation. Um, you have, like, if you have a good prep against some of these Asian teams and your mechanics stay up, they're playing on the Chinese server a lot. Like, I know yeah. um, Larson and Inspired and Hansama are playing a lot on the super server. Finn is their weakest player. So if he shows up, I do think Rogue can take some games off. Rogue can have some really competitive games. Mm -hmm. If Rogue just absolutely overperforms and one of the Asian teams absolutely underperforms, they can go. go home early. You never know. Okay. Sweet. All right. Uh, anybody yes. else got any dark horses? We talked about Rogue. We talked about FlyQuest. I think you make good arguments for any of those. Uh, is there any any other team you want to mention before we get into the play-in stage? All right. So let's go oh. then to the play-ins because these are the teams that are playing still for a spot. Um, is there anybody on here that is a clear winner to you guys that is definitely going to make it? Um, um, LGD. LGD. Okay. <laughs> So say that again, Alistair. You said LGD. LGD, Mad Lions, Team Liquid. Okay, those are your three. My, the only one I'm saying is LGD. Okay. LGD for sure. I think sure. those three make it out. And I think the I think the fourth one would probably be either UOL or PSG Talent. It would depend on how they do with their subs. Yeah, that's true. That's not a lot of time to, to get uh, coordinated at such short notice. But who knows? Maybe they've had some experience uh, playing with each other. Uh, before so I mean let's let's break this down we got group a with INTZ legacy esports mad lions super massive and team liquid group b we have LGD gaming PSG talent rainbow seven unicorns of love and v3 esports I gotta be honest I don't know a lot of these teams from I mean I've heard of INTZ uh, of course mad lions this team's from major regions I know uh, and I've at least seen some games some of the players but some of these minor regions I have no clue about um, so I'm gonna defer to some of you guys if you've seen any of their gameplay i know mitchell you've done some homework there so you could take the lead here what, what are your thoughts on some of these uh teams that maybe not some of our, our listeners are not too familiar with yeah so um the teams that i looked at were intz super massive uh and unicorns of love and mm -hmm. legacy so um oh and uh yeah super massive, I said super massive. so i think Oh, and PSG Talon. That's right. Yeah. And Machi. I looked at those two. Um, so PSG Talon, I'll start with them because they're the um, sort of like major region favorites mm -hmm. yeah. um, that we're not really sure about. Um, they're, I think their bot lane is their best, are their best players. Um, so they're losing their jungle mid, I believe, and yeah. getting it switched out. So that could actually be a random, just random, who knows, maybe that's a benefit that they have to switch them out. Mm. Uh, as Kevin said earlier, uh, previous teams, I think you said super massive, they had to switch out random players and they actually ended up doing a lot better than expected. That could happen to PSG Talon. Um, but I will say that they were fairly unimpressive. Mm. Um, in their finals or in their, I guess, their qualifiers for Worlds, uh, their top laner, was playing a Camille into Mordekaiser, and he was on Camille. He was winning lane up about 15 CS. He just decides to E into the Mordekaiser and gets solo killed. Um, and then the enemy Mordekaiser just proceeded to just, you know, run it in, run it down. He was like, I'm going to kill Camille, and then you would die. So it didn't feel like PSG Talon really earned some of their wins in the finals mm -hmm. that they would earn in plans potentially. Um, so I'm looking at them to not maybe make it out of group B. Uh, then I watched Unicorns of Love. Um, Unicorns of Love, they had they played against Gambit in their finals, mm -hmm. and it was it was a it was a fiesta. They had they played Sona Lux in the bot lane. They played Tristana mid. They played wow. Kha'Zix jungle. Uh, they were playing against uh, Diamond Procs on Gambit. He invaded level two. He dove bot lane level two. Um, <laughs> like. Gambit was up like 10, 11 K. They had Mountain Soul and the Unicorn still love, still won oh, with, uh, with Sona Lux. So expect Unicorn's love to come in with some really weird picks as they do and really throw a wrench. Maybe take a game off LGD, I doubt it, but probably 
come in as I mean the second that happened scene. before with uh what was that team that everybody loved uh I think it was a I want to say it was a Vietnamese team or something that they just um, uh, you guys Gigabyte know Marine. Gigabyte, Gigabyte Marines, Marines where people yeah. were like what the heck and it was just fun and I you know honestly I hope there's a team like that maybe that could be them where they just pull out some stuff and you're like what is happening and then you just don't know you don't know what to expect teams don't know what to expect and they take some wit you know they take some games that's what makes it you know you never know exciting so yeah 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 i mean gigabyte marines they did the what five minute level six nocturne yeah that was crazy, crazy. Um, that was crazy i'll uh, i'll speed run through the rest of this you don't have to listen to me talking uh super massive they're looking very poor uh their finals looked like it should have been a 3-0 and mm-hmm. they threw two games to get five series really poorly um cacao was supposed to be like their favorite like really strong jungler he looked very poor in the finals uh he died a lot randomly um the, they play very standard, you know, like Orn in the top lane, Azir mid, Caitlyn bot, very standard. I don't think they're going to be able to upset Team Liquid or Mad Lions with that play style. They'll have to change something up. Yeah. Uh, INTZ, um, very mediocre team as well, except their mid laner. I think their mid laner is actually very, very good. He played some weird stuff. He played Ari mid. Um, I thought his, their mid laner was their best player, so potentially could upset Team Liquid or Mad Lions. Legacy Esports um, also plays very standard, very uh, normal. I didn't actually go through their games that much, just watch one game. Not, nothing too um, much, too stand, standout-ish? Not, nothing exciting. Yeah. So I do think that it's going to be Team Liquid Mad Lions, but INTZ is definitely a team to watch out for, I think. Okay, so I mean, we, we're picking teams here that are from the major regions, obviously. Is there any, like, because there's that's three spots. So we talked about uh, Team Liquid, LGD, and uh, Mad Lions, I think... I mean, that's on paper. That looks like the three that would come in. So uh, the fourth one, do you think another, you know, I mean, I know Unicorns of Love is the Russian uh, one now, but that is still, they still kind of come from a, a major type region. I mean, what do you, what are you guys thinking? Do you think any of the minor regions could, could make a, could slip in there on one of the, one of the spots, the last spot? I mean, yeah, it, looking into it. Uh, PSG talent might not make it out. I think Unicorns of Love probably, or even V3, have a good chance. Because PSG talent's replacement players yeah. are Uniboy and Kongyue. Both of those people were on Mad Team in 2018. Yeah. If anyone remembers the third seed Mad Team, or second seed, or whatever they were from Taiwan that year, they went 0-6 and six in round uh, group stage round robin. And then 0-3 mm. in Rift Rivals. They looked... Okay, actually, as players, but they just that team could never win. And I don't see these guys who are being loaned out to a different team yeah, doing, like, yeah. any miracles, right? Because when, when Supermassive got their loan, they got, like, Frozen and Crash or something like that. Like, a Korean mid laner and a Korean jungler who were, like, actually pretty good in LCK back in the day. Mm-hmm. And they, like, popped off. Like, they were probably at least, like, suitable side grades for the people who were originally on um, Supermassive. So I... I just don't see PSG talent recreating that same magic. That being with that in mind, I think UOL is probably favorite. Then they have the name whose name I cannot say. <laughs> the, the pineapple guy. He's like okay. the Anana sick or whatever his name. Oh, Anana sick. Yeah, he's actually yeah. he's he's interesting. He's interesting. He kind he's of runs it, too. but he also pops off. <laughs> yeah, he'll be interesting, and I don't think a team that's got a sub jungler is gonna do much against him. Um, uh, he could run about... it either way, though. Yeah. 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 Run either way. I think Unicorns of Love, their ADC gadget, uh, he's been popping off in the Chinese Super Server. Uh, I've been seeing some of his clips. I've been seeing uh, him pop up in the streams. I think he's pretty, I think he's probably, I don't remember off the top of my head, but probably the highest ranking player on the Super Server from the wildcard region. So, Unicorns of Love, man. Maybe. Gadget. Isn't he the guy who played on Vega Squadron last year? He was the last year's representative of Vega Carrot, too. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. I believe so. I think they did pretty well. They were the ones who got to, like, game three or something at MSI. Yeah, they got to game five at MSI against Fangvu Buffalo, the... Oh, oh, that's right. Fangvu Buffalo, the team that 2 0 G2. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, so that was that really spicy play-ins for MSI. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. that's right. This guy's good. He was on that... That uh, Vega Squadron team is basically this exact team. It is this exact same team. I just looked at the roster. They oh, it's the exact it. same team. Oh, okay. okay. 
So the unicorns if you can take just Fongbu Buffalo to game five, that's that's pretty scary. And Fongbu For... Buffalo can beat G2, the MSI champions? There okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, hmm. <laughs> G2 got lucky that Fongbu didn't didn't make it out of uh, group stage. Yeah, yeah. man. It would have taken the title. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh man, and Vietnam being here would have been so spicy. I know yeah, it's unfortunate. It's really miss. Um, okay, well, one thing I want to talk about moving on is uh, the super server because uh, we talked about this a little bit beforehand. I've been wa I've been having a great time watching these players on the super server, and, so and like it's funny how some of these people just I guess they're queuing up a solo queue, but then they'll end up like like four TSM members on one team with like Doon B on the other team. And I saw a game where Doon B was Akali and uh, Bjergsen was on uh, Zillion, and he was already like they were typing and it was just they had a train like they had translated on the video and it was just really cool to see these pros come up against each other and from different regions um overall i'm loving that they're spamming you know because this is again they need to get kind of custom to playing some of these players that they're going to face and the style in china you know uh having to get acclimated uh give me some highlights thoughts on what you've seen so far in the super server uh some of the players that you've seen who's looking good who you know who would you like to see more of? Who's not looking so good? That sort of thing. Uh, and I'll let you kind of open it up from there. So, uh, Well, I'll start. I think um, one of the players that, you know, from North America we can talk about is Tactical and Core JJ in mm -hmm. the bot lane. Yeah. They are, um, I think they're, ch they're both challenger. They're of the highest rank in North America. Um, and, you know, we have a lot of, we had a, a lot of hopes, like Core JJ won MVP. Tactical one rookie of the split. They really looked like the best players in Team Liquid in their five game series against mm. Black West and TSM. So, yeah, they're popping off in the Chinese super server. Um, tactical, I mean, he had one of, he, he just did it again. He had another 1v9 uh, clips to play mm. in the, uh, in one of those clips. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, looking, looking at those guys. Yeah, that's really interesting. You, you guys see anything, Kevin Alistair? Uh, have you seen any of the games I from the Super Server? Much. You haven't seen much by you, Kevin. I've been watching a lot of highlights of just Bjergsen and Doinby in the same matches over and I over. Know. And uh, Bjerg is looking on point. Like, I, him competing yeah. against Doinby. I just watched Doinby's POV. He's like, dang, this guy's actually legit. Uh, yeah. It's pretty much what he's saying. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really fun. I, I'm glad to see TSM is showing up. So I actually played in China before. I've hit plat one i think on the first server not the super server ionia one before they had the super server that server is crazy that server is like they're they're like mid plats are probably our mid diamonds it's like the equivalent because they just have so many people playing and competing with each other um so the fact that our players are actually able to hold up there is actually yeah, a good sign a good of things sign. to come uh you also mentioned mitchell you mentioned rogue was doing well there mm -hmm. which is extremely surprising to me i Honestly, I think Finn is going to get absolutely blasted by Naguri and Zoom. And I think Zoom is probably one of the best top laners here, if not the best at Worlds right now. So uh, I'm worried for Rogue, but if they could do well in the solo queue, like at the very least, even if it doesn't translate one to one, because, you know, there's a lot of one tricks there, they're mm -hmm. going to pick up a lot of good practice that they'll yeah. need. I'm I, surprised yeah, that they didn't yeah. play in Korea. Usually, don't they always play on the Korean server, even if it was in China? So I'm curious why they all chose the Super Server this time. Um, so only, um, the Korea, a lot of the Korean players are playing in Korea, but I think every Western player has to play in the Chinese super server because they, that's just how it, yeah. how it went down. Oh, it's like, it's like a requirement. I, I mean, I mean not, they don't have, they don't have a Korean ID, so. Yeah. Oh, right. I forgot Korea yeah. is making, you have to be very official. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I like you guys, I'm just excited to see certain matchups like that people run into, you know, because again, it's solo queue, but at the same time, that environment's different there. So to see some of these uh, matchups happening, you know, it, it's really fun and exciting to watch because this doesn't happen too often. But um, yeah, to hone in again on just obviously following Bjergsen TSM because I'm the TSM fan, right? Like seeing uh, Don B say those things about. Bjerg is pretty fun. Like, it's pretty cool to see him. He's like, oh, he's actually, like, he's he's good. It's like, that's so clean. Like, so to hear them say something about, like, NA players is great. I mean, I've even seen some pretty nice plays from uh, Broken Blade, you know, uh, playing. So, it's going to be great. Like, Spika has been making some some nice highlights, too, uh, here and there. So, Spika's good, man. He's good, Spika's man. Good. 
He's uh, he's popping off on the solo queue. Yeah, like, so I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be really fun uh, to to see this. And we talked about this. Uh, I don't even know if this was on the no, this was on the episode that was actually recorded and out there. But we talked about how you know we wish we could change kind of the world's format where they got more games in and kind of this environment so that they get again like more reps in to kind of get used to the the environment, the competition. And so this is good to see them spamming solo queue and then actually seeing them do well. It's a good sign because it, it means that maybe hopefully that'll translate into better competition when we actually hit the the world's quote-unquote stage uh, because you know there's always been um, kind of just this this idea that uh, the eastern regions always dominate the western regions and you know granted uh, LEC's done well China uh, is still dominating and Korea is always right there so um, going with uh, the gameplay let's talk about world's patch you know it's going to be 10.19 uh, we do know that uh, Yon is that correct? Right. Wrong. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, we before we move on from the super server. Oh, I mean, he had something to say about the super server. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you, I mean, if you're talking about TSM. You're trying okay. to have him up, right? Of like, course. Treats. Treats is oh, the yeah. number one player in Challenger right. for all yeah. Western players. He's the highest LP Challenger player for all Western players playing jungle support. The guy is a sixty percent win rate. That's crazy. Six, 60% win rate in Challenger in the Chinese Super Server. Um, the dude has a clean Lee Sin. Oh my god, is his Lee Sin clean? I wouldn't be surprised if Brock, if Team Liquid was like, can we borrow treats <laughs> oh, for a little while? For a little while. Uh, his, his Lee Sin might be better than Brock says. Yikes. Uh, he's higher ranked for sure. Um, uh -huh. We might see treats sub in man who knows like biofrost and double lift are barely playing chinese Super. they have like i think sub 70 games why is chinese that Super. i don't know uh some players double just don't lift. <laughs> double lift and biofrost are just not playing as much uh the same thing is happening on a lot of teams randomly um, like perks and mickey don't have a lot of games uh i know on fly quests uh wild turtle or wild turtle is a lot ignar and solo don't have a lot uh, on Team Liquid, Jensen and Broxa don't have a lot, I think. So mm. it's just so, some of these players on these teams just don't have a lot of games. Yeah. Um, but Treats has a ton, and he's popping off. His Pantheon support's really, really crazy. Yeah. He just runs around and kills people over and over again. He's, a, he's basically a mid laner. Like, That's why I so. like it boggles my mind, though. Like Even on the TSM Legends, where they are not Legends, they had a Q&A type deal, and they were answering... You know, fan questions, and one of them was like, "Who plays the most solo queue on their off time?" Um, and definitely, Double Lift and Bio had the least out of uh, all of all of them, uh, which is crazy to me, especially like now. But I'm I get I don't know. Maybe there's something behind the scenes that we won't see. Maybe it's more of like mentally they want to prepare by not playing as much. I don't know. But to me, I feel like if you're gonna get acclimated, you need to get those reps in. Doesn't matter. You know, just just get used it to it. So. They were in 14 day quarantine. What else do you have to do? What else are you going to do? Sitting in a room, yeah, right? Exactly. Like they should have. I think yeah. every single NA player should have just absolutely been spamming Spam. that. Spam so but cute. Here's a question yeah, though. So uh, talking, I guess, about getting the reps in, right? Do you think teams that make it out of play-in stage have an advantage since they've been already kind of warming up, I guess, you know, going through some competition, even though it might not be like the group level competition. Uh, how, how do you feel about that? Because sometimes in the NBA, it goes to, like people have this debate too. like if one side they're both playing, you know, best of sevens. And if one side they sweep their team, so they're done in four games and the other side, it goes all the way to game seven. Well, the other side that swept gets more days rest. Right. And the other team that went to game seven, they have to play in like a day or two. And some people think, well, getting more rest is better because they're, you know, physically get to recover, mentally recover. But then other people say, well, no, the, the team that has just played game seven has to get in. They're already in rhythm. They're already in competition mode. They got their game face on. And so whatever, whatever they think they have the advantage. Who do you think has a quote unquote advantage? Or is there any? Am I looking too deep into this? But, you know, with play-ins already getting those reps in as opposed to groups where that's their first time, do you think the play-in teams have somewhat of an advantage here? Or are the group teams too good anyways? 
I think they have an advantage for maybe the first. If there's an advantage, it, there, it's only going to be the first week. I don't yeah. think it'll last throughout the but entire. But that's still first that's still important though, right? Because every every Which, game counts. Yeah. I mean, I it also depends on the group. I mean, if you're looking at Mad Lions subbing in to Group D, then I don't. <laughs> I don't know if you're talking. Okay. If you're talking like. I don't, you're, not, you're talking you know, unicorns of love subbing to group B, or then probably not. But if you're talking LGD subbing into group C, then yeah, there's probably some sure. merit there. Yeah. Okay. I think it gives them a good. Ch so the nuance is if they don't have never been to worlds before, I think it gives them time to warm up and just get that stage jitter out. To be honest, it's not as big as it used to be just because it's going to be all online. Yeah. Um, so I think LGD would probably get a lot out of it. Uh, I will also mention real quick something we haven't mentioned with this whole play in just all this is that LG doesn't have the quarantine. Everyone else does. That's a huge Ooh, buff. Yeah. Like for those, some of those teams are arriving like like uh, the Korean team, which is they're not in play in, but the Korean team, uh, I think they came like sometime in september maybe or mm -hmm. late august because their playoffs only finished and their their gauntlet only finished very late right yeah yeah so and they had this they had the quarantine for two whole weeks i'm pretty sure every team has to quarantine for two weeks going yeah. to china except for the chinese teams because clearly yeah. they've been there so yeah. that's a huge buff that buff is huge for sure. gd i yeah. can't see any non any quarantined up team who doesn't get proper practice for two weeks even standing a chance to yeah. be honest it's a good point um, I mean, deal. I'm even thinking of like Team Liquid too, right? Like we already said that uh, Core JJ Tactical looking good, right? Well, now let's add some games under their belt and they get this taste of competition. And maybe Broxo wakes up, you know? Like who knows? And maybe this actually it's helps. Only been them. a year. It's only been a year, you know. But whatever, you know. Maybe it does kind he was of good at Worlds. He was yeah, good at Worlds. and like, and this is what they got him for, right? Like the Worlds like uh, stage. So here they are, you know. Maybe he he turns on all of a sudden, and then uh, they get some momentum, and who knows, steals a game or two from. You know, somebody who's really good. And again, every game counts because it's going towards their seeding. Uh, and so you never know. So I, I just wanted to throw that in there and get your guys' thoughts. Mitchell, do you have any thoughts on that? Well, uh, speaking of Broxa, I mean, this is the point in time where his job is on the line, right? His contract <laughs> yeah. is up at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And everyone knows that Team Liquid bought him for world performance. If he doesn't show up here, he gets fired. He's gone yeah. up to Team Liquid. He doesn't have a team next year yet, maybe. Yeah. So... Um, that's that's all I'll say about Broxa. He's got to show up. Plans hopefully helps him. Sure. Uh, I'll also say that in the past years, where the team that went through Gauntlet got a sort of advantage, like I think the notable sport, the notable one is Cloud Nine, right? Mm -hmm. Cloud Nine, they almost always went through Gauntlet, and they almost always were the only team to get out of groups. Yeah. Um, they made it out of groups in 2018, all the way to semifinals, and then the year before they made it out of groups and they lost a game five to World Elite. So, both were from Gauntlet, I mm. believe. So, it's it's a lot about both the management of the team, which Cloud9 has a great, and the meta. So, what happened in 2018 with the meta was that the patches leading up to Worlds were large. They changed a lot about yeah, the game. Yeah, that's true. So, the fact that they were able to figure out the meta during play-ins, and then Genji and RNG... And like they were kind of asleep with the meta, that was like the big deal. The world's patch this year is not that big, mm -hmm. so I don't think the play-ins gives as much of an advantage. In fact, it might give a disadvantage, where if the play-in teams figure out the meta for you, then you can sit on the sidelines watching in group stage and figure out your counters and what's better. Yeah. You you know what Team Liquid or Mad Lions or LGD plays in play-ins. They're experimenting. They're figuring out the meta. And then you can sit back and be like, okay, we'll try that in solo queue, we'll try that in scrims, mm -hmm. and we'll come up with the counter. Yeah. So. Well, interesting that you mentioned the patch, because what a segue. <laughs> Talking about the world's patch coming in, uh, you know, and we'll, we'll let's discuss this because, again, it's fun to maybe think about some metas, you know, that are going to develop here. Um, but we do know that Yon is disabled, correct? Uh, yes. So Yon, Yon won't be uh, playable during the Worlds, uh, which is, I think that's okay for me because, you know, I, 
Actually, no, I wish they kind of had it. You know, it'd be nice to see I some wish of these. They had it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I think it actually, you know what? It'd be nice to see some of these. Uh, yeah, so like, yeah, these, own, yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, what yeah. am I saying? That would have just been awesome. But okay, so let's talk about World's Patch. You know, what are you guys thinking for, for meta here? What do you think we're going to see a lot of? Um, give me your thoughts on, on the patch. I mean, what bot laners are we seeing? Are we still seeing Senna or is she gone? Or are we seeing Ash still? Or, or you know? Go ahead, Alistair. Okay, I know you so want to talk. I, I, I mentioned ADCs. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I can tell you we're still going to see Senna. The Senna nerfs are more of a solo queue nerf rather than okay. an AD carry. Oh, I know they're solo queue nerfs. Uh, I've been paired up with some Senna's, and it's not looking good. <laughs> <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> but I, I can tell you most of the souls you get, um, at least early game, well, pretty much all game, most of them are from actually hitting champions, mm. um, not from the wave, and especially because... Uh, since Senna's usually the one last hitting them, she's gonna yeah. get more. She gets that like, you get more souls if you don't uh, hit them. So if you, or at least there's a higher chance. I'm pretty sure unless they removed that. But I I don't think the Senna changes are gonna be that big a deal. Uh, for pro play, I think we're still gonna see Ash just because Hawkshot is super good. Yeah, in this sure. meta, just like always know where the jungler is and mm -hmm. like. It's jungle meta, so that's a huge deal. Um, Caitlyn, I think we're still going to see Caitlyn. I mean, these were pretty heavy nerfs, but we're still going to see her. I think just because it, it's kind of a good meta for her. Probably um, some Jin. You think Jin will show show up? Yeah, we'll see Jin. We'll see that. We'll see the four champions we've already been seeing. Mm -hmm. And and we better see Jinx. Jinx, I'm, you were gonna gonna say, Jinx. I'm gonna keep saying okay. it. All right, I'm gonna he's keep calling it now. It. Jinx you know is coming. Here, here, I've I've got this for you. In okay, on the uh, team I'm playing with, in all of our scrims, we've I have played six games of Jinx, and I have not lost a single one. All right, you heard it here first, y'all. Against Ash, against Caitlyn, against Senna, I've beat them. Call all him time. Prophet Alistair. I I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, dude, it sounds like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, no, I think, it's, it's not the pick. It's for, just Alistair. It's just, just too good. Just, He's good. No, to world, so. no, Jinx is good in this <laughs> meta, but people okay. don't want to play it. Right. And I think, I, I think we might see. I think the Vayne buffs are going under the radar. I think they're okay. pretty solid. I hope we see that. And I think if we see Vayne, we may see Twitch. Maybe. All right. That's the question. It's a pretty good, pretty good in-depth ADC breakdown. I like it. Uh, what what other things you guys think we'll see? Maybe in the jungle, we're going to see Hecarim some more. <laughs> I mean, yeah, obviously we're going to yeah. see Hecarim. Okay. Um, okay. I, th I, I think going back to Twitch, uh, all the scrims that have been leaked, we did talk about the scrim leaks, by the way, which is, could oh, be yeah. interesting. True. But almost all of them have a Twitch popping off in them. Uh, a lot of them have Twitch yeah, right. in the scrims. Okay, so, I yeah, I think we are seeing Twitch. I don't think it's a maybe. I think we're just going to see Twitch. Um, it's, we're going to see, I mean, we're going to see at least one guys. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're going to see some Twitch. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'll just say that. What about the ju that. the jungle side there, Kevin? You're going to, we're going to see some, some more of your girl Eve or, uh, <laughs> oh, uh there's there, we will see some Eve bans. I don't think that Eve is the pick that will be used that often because the teams that can play it, it's ban worth and the teams that can't play will never play it. Right? Okay. Like there's no, there's no like. I, I picked up Eve last week. I think I'm going to play it on the stage. That's not happening. Eve mm -hmm. is a lot more of a time commitment in my mind. I will say, I think Rek'Sai might get disabled. Uh, there's a bug with Rek'Sai right now. Oh, where wow. she it, got, it got patched. It got, it got patched, patched, but is that going to be live on 1019 in yeah. world server? That's what I'm wondering. I'm pretty sure, yeah. yeah. That's okay. what I, I, I just wasn't sure if they have like a, state, a static state yeah. patch or nothing. Right. Um, otherwise, then there's no reason Rek'Sai should be replayed. Okay. Um, I, I personally have a huge bias against Rek'Sai, so I don't think he's going to be play. Uh, she, we'll still man. see a lot of great She, jugglers. man, she. <laughs> oh, sorry, she. Uh, yeah, I don't play Rek'Sai. Yeah, I don't bad. know. I uh, didn't know either. It took me a while. A lot of Graves junglers, as always, um, uh -huh. will show up. And besides that, you'll see some interesting, the aggressive tank play from some of the LPL junglers, is what I know. I don't know too much about Canyon's picks, to okay. be honest. I hope we see some high-level Nidalee play. 
Like I want to uh, see oh, world. Yeah. Gonna, yes. Oh yeah. We're gonna see a lot of high level. It's, uh, I, it's just gonna be nice because uh, honestly, it's been such a good pick in other regions, and like NA until the playoffs was unable to do it. Mm -hmm. Like Speak Up played some really good games. Centaurian played like a decent. Speak is the game. only Nidalee player, so pretty much. So like, <laughs> but against other Nidalee players, I I just think it's gonna be pretty crazy. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that that's my rundown. I mean, it's it's pretty. It's not that different. The jungle didn't really get touched. You think we'll see set set in the jungle? Yes. Think yeah, so? I'm not a big fan, but I think his stats just lend it to be so good for diving and ganking yeah. and all that. Okay. Well, I mean, no, no junglers really got touched in this patch. Yep. Uh, the only much. change here is Ivern, I think. Will we I mean, see Ivor? I play have play no. Yeah, let's let's not. Uh, Unicorn's been love, playing. Baby. Spica's been playing Ivor. That's true. Spica. Uh, did I mention in the last podcast? And I didn't get. We didn't upload. You probably it, right? did. I, I think okay. I played a lot said, of Ivor. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Spica uh, uh, at the very beginning of playoffs played a crap ton of Ivor. Almost half of his solo queue games were on Ivor. Mm -hmm. Like when I was learning to play Ivor, because. Uh, Alistair's trying to convince me to play that champion. Um, <laughs> yeah. I looked up pro builds, you know, just you die GG pro builds. Yeah. And Spica was just the guy. He just played a crap ton of Ivern on there. Wow. Um, and I was like, that's so weird. Didn't play it a single game in playoffs, but yeah. hey, they got Shen Jungle, right? So if you can see Shen, Shen Jungle pulled out randomly in playoffs. And I've seen him uh, stream it too. And uh, I mean, every time he plays Ivern, he's always like, look at my chip, look at my chip. He's so, he's OP, he's OP. <laughs> and he's just like smurfing on people. He he's is, like, he's so good. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's what he When Ivern's OP, he's really OP. Oh. Yeah, so, I mean, you never know. Uh, maybe, he maybe is someone. right now. People just don't want to play him. I'm telling you, man. Yeah. Hey, Champion's the, so good. The buff too, 10% slow. That's, that's yeah, pretty that's big. Pretty crazy. That's yep. nice. Like, yep. His E is a low cooldown, so yeah. and you, you rush forty five percent CDR. So okay, do you think more? Hopefully. Okay, let's move on to the top lane. Do you think we'll see more of the Orns and the you know tanks type Mordekaiser stuff? Are we going to see more Camilles? Uh, you know, I don't know Renektons or Jax. I mean, even? you just listed the four champions that okay. we're going to see. <laughs> that, that's all, all of those. I, I, again, we'll top, those. Lane, top lane didn't really get touched aside okay. from. Uh, the buff to Aurelia's ultimate. There's re there's no real top lane changes we're gonna, except for Lucian. We're it, we're gonna see uh, Aurelia. Yeah, I mean Lucian barely got touched, right? I think we yeah. did the math last episode. He lost seven AD at level eighteen. That's freaking nothing. Yeah, it's absolutely nothing. Yeah. Um, but we're gonna see Camille for sure. I mean, we're gonna see Aurelia too for sure. <laughs> I think we're gonna see Fiora from the top laners that played Fiora oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> LPL. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then we'll Jax. see. We're gonna see. We're gonna see less Jacks. I don't think we're gonna see that much Jacks actually. Uh, I think it might be a, a counter to Camille, but that's about it. Mm -hmm. Maybe a counter to more Kaiser. I don't actually think we're gonna see that much more to Kaiser. Uh, but we're. It's gonna be like Orn, Camille, Shen, um, maybe a little bit of Aurelia and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, what else did you say? Um, Fiora. Fiora, yes. There's one other champion that we're going to see top. Renekton, what about GP? Renekton, yes. We're going to see. We'll definitely see Renekton. We're going to oh see a crap ton of Renekton. We're going to see people say Renekton is a terrible pick. Why are people first picking Renekton? And we're going to see a lot of wow. Why aren't you banning Renekton? I've so, seen uh, Naguri play Renekton. Renekton. He's freaking good at, at that <laughs> champion. LS is going to lose his mind this world. So I know. Like, LPL teams are picking garbage characters and they're just getting away with it. Oh, yeah. It's he's so going to lose. I mean, Renekton in Italy is still a broken combo. So. Yeah. Well, let's talk about then the mid lane. Is there any variance here? Because, again, we could talk about all the you know similar champions, you know, the Syndras. We'll probably see Zillion unless it's banned every time from, you know, away from Bjergsen. But uh, other than the quote unquote typical mids, do you think, well, you know, is Akali going to get played? I mean, it, yes. Uh, OK, so we'll, we'll probably she got nerfed. To... She's still going to see play. OK, um, players like the buff she got was not the like the buff she got was like before that got reverted in yeah. this patch. I mean, it was five base and it's it's something right. It's about right. killing the backline uh -huh. minion waves. But I think all that did was just show pro players, hey, a colleague exists. And mm -hmm. now that players realize a colleague exists, it's the same thing with Ash, it's the same with Caitlyn. You can revert their buffs and nerf them harder, and they're still going to see play. Yeah. So we're going to see a Kali. Uh, we're going to see a lot of Silas. We're oh, still going to yeah. see Twisted Fate. Even though we're crazy. TF, yeah, yeah. Silas, yep. Twisted Fate got nerfed, but we're still going to see him. Uh, mm -hmm. He lost the five movement speed. Uh, we're going to see Galio. Uh, we're going to see... 
this is the one that I'm not sure about, and it might be a little troll, and I might regret it. I think we're gonna see Ari. I was gonna say. I think yeah, we might I don't see Ari. See Azir though. I don't yeah, I don't. Really. I don't know. A lot of players. I don't okay, think we're so much Azir. Yeah. On the last time we said this, and I and the episode didn't go through. I also agreed we're not gonna see a lot of Azir. But then I I looked at a lot of the players. So many people in this world championship play a ton of Azir, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, Azir is like, I don't know, half, a third of uh, some of the players going, like, their most played champion. So, even though he gets nerfed and it's not really the meta, it's kind of shifting away from him. We I might don't still know. see Azir. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, that's the thing. Like, I, I feel like Azir is one of those champs that you always end up seeing somehow. Uh, I don't think it's that good. I just think it's like a lot either, of players but... would be comfortable playing with him. Yeah. But he, he just takes so long to ramp up, and That's, I don't yeah. think it's like a great meta for him. But, um, and I think we're going to see more Zillion than just from TSM. I actually think a lot of other people, like Bjergsen has been getting too popular. It's kind of yeah. for his downfall. Like, I actually do think we're going to see Zillion from more than just Bjergsen. And I mean, again, if you think about it, like, and as he scales up his ultimate, like, the ultimate alone is, I mean, it's so broken in the sense that you get a second chance, like, with somebody, you know? And uh, if if you can maneuver that champion really well, I mean, it, it is something to deal with because any, I, I've heard um, people on the dive say this, that basically anything that gives you something that can negate something you just did like they blew all my ult all their ultimates on you and whoops he just pressed r like that is a huge that is a huge buff if you can play it properly so uh, i think you might be right like you know teams obviously it's not just zillion that can play zillion I mean, it's not just. I said it's not just Zillion that can play Zillion. It's not just Bjergsen no, that, that can play sense. Zillion. Yeah, it's, it's, true. Not, it's true. So you know, I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully, <laughs> other people pick them up uh, and see if they can match Bjerg's style. Okay. Uh, is there any? Oh, here's the most important question. First of all, is there anything else that y'all want to throw in? Because we're about an hour, and I have one more important question to ask. But before that, any last things y'all want to throw out here? Before play and start, I was wrong. It actually starts Friday the 25th. I was hoping yeah, Thursday. Friday. So Friday the 25th, that's when play and start. But is there any last things that you guys want to say for us? That's a very important question. Yeah. Um, Pan Pantheon support. Yo, yeah. Pantheon support. I've been playing that too. Delete it's actually and... pretty awesome. <laughs> that's a no, it's not. Get it gone. I, I love it. it. Oh, no, man. That's no, I don't. Anything. No, I want it out. Please. It's, it's so literally great. a mid laner. Yeah. You can just you can watch out. Who made what role to this call just by the reaction. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, I've been playing a lot of support, and I love uh, Pantheon support, man. It's, it's so stupid. You're just a mid laner. You just one shot people as a support. Right. That's not balanced. <laughs> like I don't get why that's it's allowed. The, the funny yeah, thing is, I've never played. I have never played reworked Pantheon until like. A few weeks ago <laughs> and i'm like yeah. you know what he, he, you know he's been getting he's like pretty high oh on the the god. tier list for support so let me play him oh my gosh what have i been missing out on okay, also so. um also i don't know if we're gonna see this i think we might maokai support has a 53 percent win rate so with a five percent no rate, i don't think we will i mean it's Maokai is Maokai, right? If yeah. you have the right comp for it, True. I think we can see it. It's always if the hero was here's out right now, lane. you would see it. Yeah. Just, oh, here, here's a bot lane I'm going to call. I'm, I'm going to say we're going to see Swain Pantheon. Oh, Ooh, Swain, yes. Yeah. Yes. No, actually Swain, yes. Swain is Swain it, Pantheon. I don't insane. doubt it. Oh. Yeah. Swain is freaking stupid, man. <laughs> Swain I is not... against it. <laughs> Okay, well, I couldn't play the game. Since it you was, mentioned Swain, terrible. do you think we'll see any other mage bots like Syndra? Galio, or, or? yes. Okay, Galio. I think Galio bot lane is insane. Like, actually, if you look at EU Masters and if you look at a lot of solo queue, uh -huh. there's a bunch of random kill lanes with Galio. Galio Pantheon, Galio Swain, Galio Zillion, Galio Velkaz, Galio uh -huh. Syndra. There's a bunch of weird ones with Galio because. I guess he can just murder people in the bot lane. <laughs> yeah, he does. No, he, he <laughs> yeah. does. We should, we should try some of these out. What's up? Who's down? Okay. <laughs> Let's yeah. just try some of these out. You guys, so. you guys can do it, and I'll camp you guys. <laughs> sounds, I'll just come bot lane. That sounds very fun. Okay. Galio's not fun to play against. Galio's so not fair. Oh that champion God. does too much damage. <laughs> um, all right. Is there any other things that you guys have? You guys good? You guys ready? You ready for this plans? I'm ready. Uh, Alistair's waiting questions. for groups, but 
Here's the most important question that I've been wanting to ask this entire time. Is Doublelift making it out of groups this year? Oh, there it is. Come on! Oh Let's go, Doublelift. First time out of groups. I mean, he's got a chance, right? Yeah, where's the coin? Hold up. <laughs> right, let's, okay. let's just revert to the coin. What's the That's coin going to say? Are you really flipping it? Flip the coin. Is, oh, wait, what Lord. is he? Is he heads or tails? Oh, yeah. All right, <laughs> what, what do you guys want? Heads, he's heads. heads he's heads. heads yes, Doublelift is no? heads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heads, yeah. yes. Doublelift is heads. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. All right, coin says no. Oh, oh I'm going with the coin. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going you with know, the coin. I, I don't want to, but he doesn't have a good track record. I'm rooting for him. Because like I said, man, I don't know how many more years Double Lift has, man. That's just my Double Lift and Biofrost are the worst bottling in that group. Oh, I hate to admit it. Yes. Really, you're, yeah. you're right. Yes. LGD's got, okay. That sucks. Okay, well. L LGD they might has... be the worst bottling that NA has at Worlds. Actually, I think they are. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Wild Turtle Ignar better than Turtle Ignar. Yeah, I mean, it. I don't know either. I don't know. I do think yeah. Ignar is better than Bio, but I don't know about Wild Turtle. I mean, it's just the double lift should be better than Wild Turtle. It's just his form is maybe not. You know. So, well, you said he yeah. figured well, he Wild Turtle Kate. out, so yeah. Yeah, I mean. But yeah, but he's not playing against Turtle. That's yeah, what I mean. He figured Turtle out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Turtle might just perform. He, like, in their head-to-head, -head, maybe Doublelift is better, but sure. Turtle might perform better at Worlds. Exactly. Also, Turtle has, like, 200-plus games in the Chinese Super Server, mm -hmm. and Doublelift has, like, 60. So <laughs> Doublelift slacking, man. I told you. He's yeah. been time here, with here's a big thing. Here's one big thing. Turtle can play Caitlyn. Oh, yeah. gosh. That's hey, true. It was a good play point. Caitlyn. Yep. Also, I mean, LGD's bot lane is Kramer, and I forget who their support is, but Kramer is freaking good, man. Oh, Kramer and Mark. Oh, Mark is insane, guys. LGD's bot lane is really, really good. Mark is really, really good. The guy is mid. The guy is literally in your top jungle, level two. He just wins the game at level two for you. Yeah. You and then Kramer one v twos in lane. Like. Yeah. Keep your eye out for Mark and Lumao. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lumao. L yeah, yeah, the mouth. Mouth. yeah, so good. They're so good. They're probably the two best supports in the world. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, I think we've uh, covered pretty much a well a good chunk of you know what's to be world starting playing starting on Friday. So I'm, yeah, it's going to be exciting to do that. We're going to be you know recapping all of the action. It's going to be a lot of fun. So again, thank you so much for listening. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can feel free to email us at the all in podcast, lol at gmail.com, or you can tweet us at the all in podcast. I want to say thanks once again to my awesome co-host, Kevin Mitchell Allister for always providing their awesome insight uh, until next time, guys, enjoy your climb on the rift. Enjoy worlds. Try not to be too toxic. Try not to yell at your screen too much. Try to get some sleep like me so you can see the games live if you want to. I don't know. But until next time, guys, enjoy and have a great time. Peace.